Uma Thurman American Actress Uma Thurman, Hollywood's versatile leading lady Uma Karuna Thurman is an American actress. She has performed in a variety of films, from romantic comedies and dramas to science fiction and action films. Following her appearances on the December 1985 and May 1986 covers of British Vogue, Thurman starred in Dangerous Liaisons. Born, April 29, 1970, age 54 years, Boston, Massachusetts, United States. Spouse, Ethan Hawke, M. 1998-2005, Gary Oldman, M. 1990-1992. Children, Maya Hawke, Levon Hawke. Height, 1.81 meters. Parents, Nina von Schliebrug, Robert Thurman. Siblings, Taya Thurman, Deken Thurman, Mipham Thurman, Gonden Thurman. Uma Karuna Thurman was born in Boston, Massachusetts, into a highly unorthodox and internationally minded family. She is the daughter of Nina Thurman, née Birgit Caroline von Schliebrug, a fashion model and socialite who now runs a mountain retreat, and of Robert Thurman, Robert Alexander Farrar Thurman, a professor and academic who is one of the nation's foremost Buddhist scholars. Uma's mother was born in Mexico City, Mexico, to a German father and a Swedish mother who herself was of Swedish, Danish, and German descent. Uma's father, a New Yorker, has English, Scots-Irish, Scottish, and German ancestry. Uma grew up in Amherst, Massachusetts, where her father worked at Amherst College. She and her siblings all have names deriving from Buddhist mythology, and Middle American behavior was little understood, much less pursued. And so it was that the young Thurman confronted childhood with an odd name and eccentric home life and nature seemingly conspired against her as well. She is six feet tall, and from an early age towered over everyone else in class. Her famously large feet would soon sprout to size 11 and even beyond that and although they would eventually be lovingly filmed by director Quentin Tarantino, as a child she generally wore the biggest shoes in class, which only provided another subject of ridicule. Even her long nose moved one of her mother's friends to helpfully suggest rhinoplasty to the ten-year-old Thurman. To make matters worse yet, the family constantly relocated, making the gangly, socially inept Thurman perpetually the new kid in class. The result was an exceptionally awkward, self-conscious, lonely, and alienated childhood. Unsurprisingly, the young Thurman enjoyed making believe she was someone other than herself, and so thrived at acting in school plays, her sole successful extracurricular activity. This interest, and her lanky frame, perfect for modeling, led the 15-year-old Thurman to New York City for high school and modeling work, including a layout in Glamour magazine, as she sought acting roles. The role soon came, starting with a few formulaic and forgettable Hollywood products, but immediately followed by Terry Gilliam's The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, 1988, and Stephen Freer's Dangerous Liaisons, 1988, both of which brought much attention to her unorthodox sensuality and performances that intriguingly combined innocence and worldliness. The weird, gangly girl became a sex symbol virtually overnight. Thurman continued to be offered good roles in Hollywood pictures into the early 90s, the least commercially successful but probably best known of which was her smoldering, astonishingly adult performance as June, Henry Miller's wife in Henry and June, 1990, the first movie to actually receive the dreaded NC-17 rating in the USA. After a celebrated start, Thurman's career stalled in the early 90s with movies such as The Mediocre Mad Dog and Glory, 1993. Worse, her first starring role was in Even Cowgirls Get the Blues, 1993, which had endured a tortured journey from cult favorite book to big-budget movie, and was a critical and financial debacle. Fortunately, Uma bounced back with a brilliant performance as Mia Wallace, that most unorthodox of all gangsters' malls, in Tarantino's lauded, hugely successful Pulp Fiction, 1994, a role for which Thurman received an Academy Award nomination. Since then, Thurman has had periods of flirting with roles in arty independence such as A Month by the Lake, 1995, and supporting roles in which she has lent some glamorous presence to a mixed batch of movies, such as Beautiful Girls, 1996, and The Truth About Cats and Dogs, 1996. Thurman returned to smaller films after playing the villainous Poison Ivy in the reviled Joel Schumacher effort Batman and Robin, 1997, 
and Emma Peel in a remake of The Avengers, 1998. She worked with Woody Allen and Sean Penn on Sweet and Lowdown, 1999, and starred in Richard Linklater's drama tape, 2001, opposite Hawk. Thurman also won a Golden Globe Award for her turn in the made-for-television film, Hysterical Blindness, 2002, directed by Mira Nair. A return to the mainstream spotlight came when Thurman reteamed with Quentin Tarantino for Kill Bill, Volume 1, 2003, a revenge flick the two had dreamed up on the set of Pulp Fiction, 1994. She also turned up in the John Woo Cautioner Paycheck, 2003, that same year. The renewed attention was not altogether welcome, because Thurman was dealing with the breakup of her marriage with Hawk at about this time. Thurman handled the situation with grace, however, and took her surging popularity in stride. She garnered critical acclaim for her work in Kill Bill, Volume 2, 2004, and was hailed as Tarantino's muse. Thurman reunited with Pulp Fiction, 1994, dance partner John Travolta for The Get Shorty, 1995, Sequel Be Cool, 2005, and played Ola in The Producers, 2005. Thurman had been briefly married to Gary Oldman, from 1990 to 1992. In 1998, she married Ethan Hawke, her co-star in the offbeat futuristic thriller Gattaca, 1997. The couple had two children, Levon and Maya. Hawke and Thurman filed for divorce in 2004. Family Spouses Ethan Hawke, May 1, 1998 to July 20, 2004, divorced, two children. Gary Oldman, September 26, 1990 to April 30, 1992, divorced. Children. Maya Hawke. Levon Hawke. Parents. Nina Thurman. Robert Thurman. Relatives. Gonden Thurman, sibling. Deckhen Thurman, sibling. Mipham Thurman, sibling. Trademarks. Long blonde hair and blue eyes. Statuesque, model-like figure. Trivia. Her warm friendship with director Quentin Tarantino, who calls her his muse, nearly ended following an accident on the set of Kill Bill, Volume 2, 2004. Tarantino had apparently pressured her into doing a car stunt that went wrong causing chronic neck and knee injuries that persist to this day. The production company, Miramax, withheld all proof of the accident unless Thurman agreed to sign a waiver, which she refused to do, releasing them and Tarantino from any liability. Despite Tarantino's profuse apologies, things remained very acrimonious between the two, until they finally reconciled their friendship nearly a decade later. Thurman only came forward with the incident in 2018 after Tarantino had finally given her access to footage from the accident, and Tarantino stated multiple times that he regretted asking her to do the stunt in the first place since the footage never even made it into the film. When their 18-month marriage ended, she and Gary Oldman made a pact not to talk about each other. She attended Amherst Regional Middle School, Massachusetts, for grades 7 and 8 and had Esther Haskell as an English teacher. She later visited that school to contribute to the Women's History Assembly. The children were thrilled. Before she began work on Kill Bill, Volume 1, 2003, Uma had to shed 60 pounds of pregnancy weight. She trained in three styles of kung fu and two styles of sword fighting, plus knife throwing, knife fighting, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. She has appeared in one film that has been selected for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally historically or aesthetically significant, Pulp Fiction, 1994. Named after the goddess of light and beauty in Indian mythology, in 2018, Ethan Hawke revealed that he is still paying Thurman alimony 15 years after they split. In 2010, Thurman's £6 million, $10 million, lawsuit against London-based handmade films, the production company behind Eloise in Paris, was settled. Thurman had hired Burt Fields to represent her, claiming that not only had Handmade not paid her an agreed £2,800,000 pay or play fee for the film, but that she had also lost earnings waiting for it to begin production. Her father, Robert Thurman, is a professor of Indo-Tibetan Buddhist studies at Columbia University School of Religion. He was the first Westerner to become a Tibetan Buddhist monk. Uma was named for a Hindu goddess. Robert's family has been in the United States for many generations, 
and he has English, Scots-Irish, Northern Irish, Scottish, and German ancestry. Danced with John Travolta in two movies, Pulp Fiction, 1994, and Be Cool, 2005. Ranked as number 67 in FHM's 100 Sexiest Women in the World 2005 Special Supplement. Was three months pregnant with her daughter Luna when she filmed her guest appearance on Smash, 2012. Former husband Ethan Hawke's book was dedicated to her, for Karuna. Refused two proposals from Ethan Hawke before agreeing to marry him. She was seven months pregnant at their wedding and gave no explanation for the delay. Has three brothers, with equally unusual, exotic names, Gonden Thurman, Deccan Thurman and Mipham Thurman, gave birth to her third child, a daughter Rosalind Arusha Arcadina Altalin Florence Thurman Bussin, a.k.a. Luna, on July 15, 2012. Father is boyfriend Arpid Bussin. Uma's middle name, Karuna, is one of the four sublime abodes in Buddhism. It means, compassion. The other three sublime abodes are metta, loving-kindness, mudita, sympathetic joy, and upeka, equanimity. Was nearly cast as Eleanor Arroway in Contact, 1997, after Jodie Foster initially turned it down in 1995. Foster agreed to do the film after seeing a new revision of the script, regrets turning down the role of Arwen, in Lord of the Rings. She is on the board of directors of Room to Grow, a non-profit organization founded by Rob Reiner, dedicated to enriching the lives of babies born into poverty throughout their critical first three years of development. She has no high school degree. Despite the potential for complications with childbirth because of problems with her blood vessels, she gave birth to three children. Uma and Ethan Hawke's daughter's name is Maya, which is also the name of the character that Uma played in Duke of Groove, 1995. Appeared twice on the cover of GQ magazine, February 95 and December 03. Turned down the part of Mirror Queen, eventually played by Monica Bellucci, in The Brothers Grimm, 2005. Was 5 feet 10 inches, by the age of 13. Close friend Natasha Richardson, Kill Bill, Volume 2, 2004, co-star David Carradine and half-nephew Dash Snow all died in quick succession in 2009, each under tragic circumstances. Richardson from a head injury whilst skiing, Carradine from an apparent sex game gone wrong, and Snow from a heroin overdose. Has shades of Lancome lipsticks named after her, available only in Asia, former model. Both she and her co-star in Batman and Robin, 1997, Elle McPherson, were respectively engaged to Arpid Bussin. She ended her engagement with him in 2005 and Thurman ended it with him in 2009. Briefly dated John Cusack in 1992, then again in 2003 briefly. Next to Quentin Tarantino, she presented the Palme d'Or to Winter Sleep, 2014, at the 67th Cannes Film Festival. She attended the stage barefoot. Lobbied for the female lead in How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, 2003, but lost out to Kate Hudson. Quotes Tall, sandy blonde, with sort of blue eyes, skinny in places, fat in others. An average gal. Uma Thurman, self-description. I'm very happy at home. I love to just hang out with my daughter, I love to work in my garden. I'm not a gaping hole of need. It is better to have a relationship with someone who cheats on you than with someone who does not flush the toilet. I was not particularly bright, I wasn't very athletic. I was a little too tall, odd, funny looking, I was just really weird as a kid. Desperation is the perfume of the young actor, it's so satisfying to have gotten rid of it. If you keep smelling it, it can drive you crazy. In this business a lot of people go nuts, go eccentric, even end up dead from it. Not my plan. My washing machine overwhelms me with its options, and its sophistication. Everyone looked the same, everyone had it down to such a perfect T. You get bored. That's when you have to say, I will be worse dressed, on her questionable choice of Oscar attire this year, 2004. I had to go to a mirror and look at it. I couldn't picture myself in my own head. I had no image beyond a stick figure. I wasn't a mean person as a kid, or dumb, and something has to be said to justify excluding you. Before I had my child, I thought I knew all the boundaries of myself, that I understood the limits of my heart. 
it's extraordinary to have all those limits thrown out, to realize your love is inexhaustible. I think we all exude essential truths about ourselves, and then, as an actress, there's what you do with it. There's your wit and your imagination, and what you can cook up from your experience and understanding of what makes a human being tick. In show business, to pry open doors in new areas is really tough. Until you have a successful comedy, people don't think you could be funny, which is what makes a director like Quentin Tarantino so special. He sees beyond the things on the resume that you've done to date and opens up wonderful cans of worms for you to crawl into. That's a cool thing. Having children flips the game from being about you to being about what you can create in a home and what your responsibilities are. I've thought about quitting, but I love what I do so much it's the big conundrum of my life. So I'm fighting to keep my foot in the business, be creative and stimulated, and still take care of my children. I've known some great rock chicks, and it seems to me they're allowed to have a lot more edge than movie people, where everybody's got the latest youth serums going, the newest exercise and, if that won't cover it, they'll do something else. There's this sort of improve yourself aspect, whereas the music business seems to have this much more funky attitude, with, like, a slight respect for damage. I've learned that every working mom is a superwoman. By the time I was 27, when I had my daughter, I felt I had danced on every tabletop, which I hadn't. Now I know that I hadn't. At all. There are plenty of tabletops left, should I wish to dance on them. In Style, February 2006 Uma in Full Swing by Joanne Kaufman Growing up in a small town in New England was one of the most aesthetically pleasant experiences that you can have. In Style, February 2006 Uma in Full Swing by Joanne Kaufman It's a shakedown, but I feel grateful that the hard things have been survivable, I've been able to learn from them and grow, and that the things that have been like a gift, I've had the wherewithal to realize are a gift. In Style, February 2006 Uma in Full Swing by Joanne Kaufman As they say in gambling, I've gotten to stay at the table. I've hung in. They pull the plug on people all the time. The skyhook comes out, and it's all over. But there are much bigger skyhooks as well we know. In Style, February 2006 Uma in Full Swing by Joanne Kaufman I think a lot of our lives we spend moving forward, leaping from rock to rock, trying to figure it out. But it's wonderful to feel in the prime of your life. I feel like I'm in the right place and in the right time with myself. In Style, February 2006 Uma in Full Swing by Joanne Kaufman You learn that the first failure isn't the end. I thought I'd seen the end of my career ten times over. I've experienced them as death blows. What's nice, after numerous efforts, successes, failures, losses, professional and personal, is to actually accept you're not going to ace your life. You suffer, then you get on with it. You may spend three months in bed, but, eventually, you're going to have to get up. When I was a teenager, people often referred to me as jaded or knowing. It's a classic teen illusion to think you know it all, but I've certainly learned I don't. Any guy who shows his penis in a movie gets my round of applause. On her mother's brief first marriage to drug guru Timothy Leary, people shouldn't be defined by these early alliances in their lives. Salaries my Super Ex-Girlfriend, 2006, $14 million. The Producers, 2005, $12 million. Prime, 2005, $12 million. Be Cool, 2005, $3 million. Kill Bill, Volume 2, 2004, $12 million. Paycheck, 2003, $12,500,000. Kill Bill, Volume 1, 2003, $12 million. Battle, 2000, $2 million. The Avengers, 1998, $8 million. Gattaca, 1997, $5 million. Batman and Robin, 1997, $5 million. The Truth About Cats and Dogs, 1996, $500,000. Beautiful Girls, 1996, $300,000. A Month by the Lake, 1995, $300,000. Pulp Fiction, 1994, $300,000. Even Cowgirls, Get the Blues, 1994, 
$250,000. Mad Dog and Glory, 1993, $250,000. Jennifer 8, 1992, $200,000. Final Analysis, 1992, $200,000.